keep the applause going for our last speaker of the night. We have Ken Dutton Register. <laughs> Good evening. Yeah, that's how I like it. My name is Dr. Ken Dutton Register. And let's get this right out of the way, right off the bat. Yes, I'm named after a Barbie doll. Uh, and <laughs> my job isn't being good at beach, <laughs> but yes, I am a real doctor. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to be canning hard tonight. <laughs> and I'm going to be canning all over you, including the front row. <laughs> so you have been warned. Now I have a PhD in cancer genetics and I've been researching skin cancer for over 15 years. And like all great skin cancer researchers, I love getting asked, uh, is that mole dangerous? <laughs> is that mole dangerous? <laughs> or if I sunbake nude on the beach, can I get cancer on my willy? <laughs> Answer to that, by the way, uh, maybe, possibly, and no, not if you're having sex at the same time. <laughs> sex on the beach, the cocktail that will save your life. <laughs> Now, <laughs> to be honest, uh, I'm actually not a skin doctor, I'm not a dermatologist, and I know I'm white, but they don't even trust me with telehealth medicine. <laughs> um, but I'm actually a geneticist, and this means I spend my time looking deep within cells. Um, it's, sort of look, it's sort of like I'm uh, Neo from The Matrix, uh, except instead of a lab coat and glasses, I have uh, a lab coat and goggles. <laughs> and instead of looking for glitches in The Matrix, uh, I'm looking for mutations deep in our <laughs> DNA that cause skin cancer. Uh, so totally like Neo, totally like Neo. <laughs> now like Ken, most Australians are great at beach. <laughs> but when they go there, their biggest fear are either the blue bottles of the sunny coast, uh, the sultanas of surface paradise, <laughs> Or the Speedos of North Sydney. <laughs> now this is a guy who knows how to can hard. <laughs> but I see the world of beach completely different. And that's because as a geneticist, I see the immense amount of damage we're doing to our skin and our DNA every day. And it's, it's gotten to the point where I've become super obsessed with skin. Like, sun mum level of concern obsessed like i've got some lotion in the back <laughs> just watch out for the hose on the way in <laughs> and it gets even more creepier um like if i'm watching porn and i see a mole in a guy's cock <laughs> i'm thinking to myself man is that thing cancerous it's like should i should i ring him up and let him know you should have been having sex on the beach. <laughs> now, why do I study skin cancer? Well, it's not just because the skin is the largest organ in the body. No, that's not it. <laughs> it's because if we understand skin cancer a lot better, we can improve treatments. And although skin cancer has one of the highest cure rates of any cancer, it's only if you catch it early. And unfortunately, cancer can spread and metastasize to other parts of the body. This is why it's really important to put lotion on the skin. <laughs> now, when it comes to genetics, there's a couple of different things going on. There's actually the genetics of you yourself, the DNA that you inherited from your mom and your dad. Um, but unlike Ken, who has an amazing complexion that never changes, most Australians don't have the core genetics to sort of really survive the Australian climate. <laughs> And this leads me to the second type of genetics you can get, which are somatic genetics, or the types of mutations that you gain throughout your lifetime. And you've probably guessed it, when it comes to skin cancer, the biggest culprit uh, that causes mutations in your skin is, of course, the sun. The sun literally ravages our DNA and permanently makes mutations. It's sort of like every time you go out in the sun, it's like playing a game of Jenga. Now, in this analogy, each brick is like a different mutation, and sure, you can be playing Jenga for a while and building up those mutations, 
But sometimes it only takes one block or one mutation to really kickstart that process. And I'm really surprised that most Australians don't realize this, that the sun permanently mutates your DNA. And this is surprising for decades. We've been hearing about the slip, slop, slap, no hat, no play, no sex on the beach today. <laughs> so what can we do about skin cancer? Well, firstly, we need to change our pro-tanning culture. Because you might not be aware of this, but in the 1990s, skin cancer basically didn't exist. And this is because it was in our culture to wear long sleeve clothing. So basically it protected ourselves from the sun. Now, if something like horrid as a mankini can make its way into popular culture, <laughs> then stand back, the summer 2025, the new fashion trend, the face kini. <laughs> this is legit real. <laughs> Now, obviously, it's hard to change culture, change the norms of what's acceptable or not. So today, I'm going to give you a couple of tips that you can use right now, tomorrow, to protect yourself from the sun. Now, the first one is pretty easy. Avoid the sun. <laughs> I've already told you, we've basically cured skin cancer. Go back to the 1900s. Uh, so all you need to do, just stay in your room, stay in the dark, don't come out. Very, very easy. There's some really big popular influences for doing this right now. Uh, one of them, if you could just be like Bane. <laughs> I was born in the dark. I didn't see the light till I was a young man. <laughs> now, obviously, that's unrealistic. <laughs> but just be aware of what you do and when you go out in the sun. Either that or grow a beard. This is legit from a legit paper. Uh, for areas where you grow hair, you can reduce your exposure to the sun by up to 30% because your beard hair is basically the equivalent of SPF 15 plus sunscreen. So gents, grow them dirty stashes. <laughs> Girls, grow along. <laughs> You're doing your bit for sun safety. <laughs> now this leads me to tip number two, which is get married. It sounds weird, but you can actually reduce your risk of skin cancer-related death by getting married. Why? Well, there's nothing quiet like someone nagging you and nagging you until you get that bloody mojet. <laughs> now, the last tip is to be more liberal. Not that kind of liberal. <laughs> this kind of liberal. Because as Australians, we're chronically under-applying sunscreen. In fact, for every limb of our body, we need five mils or about one teaspoon of sunscreen. Um, so I just want you to really think about this. Another analogy is that one teaspoon or five mils is about the same volume as a load of cum. <laughs> so next time you're on the beach and you're taking body shots, <laughs> just want you to have that in your head, all right? And remember, it's one teaspoon for every limb. So it's like a bukkake of sunscreen that you need to protect yourself. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how to segue into that one. <laughs> to finish, oh yeah. <laughs> for the climax of my talk, <laughs> I'm going to leave you with a poem inspired by a great Australian piece of literature called My Country. You might be familiar with the second verse. It goes, I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains. So tonight, I've re-envisioned those lyrics in a way that you will remember all the tips that I've given to you. So here we go, all right. I hate a sunburned country, a land full of bogans in mankinis. <laughs> if only they could be just like Bane, or possibly embrace the face keening. <laughs> now we shouldn't aspire to be great at speech. No, 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 we should aspire to be great at sun. And that's why it puts lotion on the skin. <laughs> So we can all have some good old honest fun. <laughs> now, if you're single, partner up, find a person to marry and nag you. Because unlike Ken, whose skin is neutral, skin cancer is real and very brutal. So grow a beard, don't shave your legs, do a bakaki in the morning. Because <laughs> whatever you do, wherever you are, protect your largest organ. <laughs> Thanks, guys.